In linear motion, Newton's law is F equals ma, which describes the nature of motion. If you put a force on a mass, then the mass will accelerate. The mass resists the acceleration. A larger mass is more difficult to accelerate. In rotational motion, a torque tau is a force that is applied along a lever arm R. If you put a torque on a mass, then that mass will spin faster. When the angle between the force and the lever arm is 90 degrees, then the torque equals F times R times sine of 90 degrees. But F equals MA, so torque equals MA times R. For a spinning mass, the linear tangential acceleration is related to the angular acceleration alpha by A equals alpha R. So we have torque equals M times alpha R times R, which is MR squared alpha. And we define this to be I times alpha, where I is the moment of inertia of the spinning object. In rotational motion, we have torque equals I alpha, and this is analogous to the linear case that F equals MA. If you put a torque on a mass, then that mass will spin faster. The moment of inertia, I equals MR squared for a point mass, is the resistance to angular acceleration in the same way that mass M is the resistance to linear acceleration. The moment of inertia, I, is a scalar quantity that is measured in kilograms times meters squared. In linear motion, when the force is zero, then the acceleration is zero, and a mass will move at constant speed forever. For rotational motion, when the torque is zero, then the angular acceleration is zero, and an object will spin at a constant rate forever. In linear motion, when the force is constant, then the acceleration is constant, and the constant acceleration equations can be used. In rotational motion, when the torque is constant, then the angular acceleration is constant, and the constant angular acceleration equations can be used. Force increases the radial component of the velocity of a mass. Torque instead increases the tangential component of the velocity of an object. Mass m is the resistance to linear acceleration. The moment of inertia i is the resistance to angular acceleration. For a point mass, the moment of inertia i equals mr squared, where r is the distance between the point mass and the axis about which it is spinning. The quantity I has no meaning until you use your own muscles to make an object spin faster. Place a 500 gram weight at the 20 centimeter mark on the meter stick and then try to make the meter stick and the weight spin faster about the axis shown. Please show that the moment of inertia of the mass is I equals 0.02 kilogram meter squared when the mass is 500 grams and the distance is 20 centimeters. Move the mass to the 90 centimeter mark and then try to make it spin faster. Your muscles will tell you that the mass does not want to spin faster. The resistance is much greater. This is the physical meaning of the moment of inertia, I. Please tie a mass to a broomstick and then try to make it spin faster. Define I in a sentence or poem. Show that I equals 0.4 kilogram meter squared when M is a half kilogram and R is 0.9 meters. The moment of inertia is a scalar quantity. The total moment of inertia of a collection of N point masses is the scalar sum. For this collection of N equals 3 masses, Please show that the total moment of inertia is 0 0.086 kilogram meter squared. In calculus, such Riemann sums always go to integrals when n goes to infinity.
Each of these two masses will orbit either the x, y, or z axis. Calculate the moment of inertia of the two masses when spun about the x, y, or z axis. Mass 1 is 3 kilograms at x equal 4 and y equals 3 meters. Mass 2 is 4 kilograms located at x equal 2, y equals minus 3 meters. When spun about the x-axis, mass 1 is the distance of 3 meters from the axis and mass 2 is the distance of 3 meters from the x-axis. The total moment of inertia is I equals m1 y1 squared plus m2 y2 squared equals 3 kilograms times 3 meters squared plus 4 kilograms times 3 meters squared equals 63 kilogram meters squared. When spun about the y-axis, mass 1 is the distance x1 from the axis and mass 2 is the distance x2 from the y-axis. Please show that the total moment of inertia is 64 kilogram meters squared. When spun about the z-axis, mass 1 is the distance r1 from the axis and mass 2 is the distance r2 from the axis. Show that the moment of inertia of both masses about the z-axis is 127 kilogram meters squared. Verify the perpendicular axis theorem that the moment of inertia about the x-axis plus the moment of inertia about the y-axis equals the moment of inertia about the z-axis for any planar object. The moment of inertia is an object's resistance to angular acceleration and this resistance depends on the axis about which the object is spinning. The moment of inertia of an extended object is found by treating it as a collection of point masses. Here is a bar or stick that is being rotated about its end. The moment of inertia of a stick of length L and mass M that is spun about its end is found by treating the stick as a collection of n mass points, each of which is a different distance from the end. The moment of inertia for the entire collection is given by the sum i equals m sub i r sub i squared, where the index i goes from 1 to the number of pieces n. When the stick is broken into n equal 10 pieces of equal mass, m sub i equals capital M over 10. Then the ith piece is the distance i over n times L from the axis. The third piece is 0.3 L away from the axis. The eighth piece is 0.8 L away from the axis. Summing these 10 masses, the total moment of inertia i equals the mass m over 10 times the location of the first piece at L over 10, which we have to square, plus the location of the second piece at 2 tenths L, which we have to square, and on up to the 10th piece, giving a grand total of I equals 0.385 ML squared for this collection of 10 mass points. Will the total moment of inertia I change if we change the number of point masses N? The procedure is to continue doubling the number of divisions of the stick by considering not just 10 pieces but 20, 40, 80, and so on until the total value of i stops changing. That is, we are summing values i over n squared as the index goes from 1 to n. When the number of pieces n equals 10, we get i equals 0.385 ml squared. When we double n from 10 to 20, the value of i changes from 0.385 to 0.356. As we continue doubling the number of pieces, we see that the value of i is converging on the number 1 third ml squared. In the notation of integral calculus, this summation process is given by i equals the integral of x squared dm. 
Notice that the result for n equal 40 was already within 95% of the true answer having n equal infinity. In this case, n equal 40 is within 95% of infinity. In physics, it is often the case that 20 is within 90% of infinity. Often 8 is, and that's why the infinity symbol is written as a sideways 8. It seems strange that this continued doubling of the number of pieces could produce any meaningful result, but that's actually the way that all of today's science and engineering is done. This is integral calculus. When the bar is spun about its edge, then its moment of inertia is I equals one-third ml squared. When the bar is spun about its center, then its moment of inertia is I equals one-twelfth ml squared. It is lower because less mass is far from the spin axis. For M equal 0.35 kilogram and L equal 1.0 meter, show that when spun about the end, the moment of inertia is I equals 0.12 kilogram meter squared. And when spun about at center, I equals 0.029 kilogram meter squared. Earlier, we calculated that the moment of inertia of these three masses was 0 0.086 kilogram meters squared. And to that, we add the moment of inertia of the stick, I equals 0.12 kilogram meters squared, to get the total moment of inertia of the system to be I equals 0.21 kilogram meters squared. The moment of inertia is greater for the object having the greatest portion of its mass farthest from the spin axis. Here is a ring or hoop being spun about its center. This is a disc or a cylinder being spun about its center. And this is a sphere being spun about its center. A hoop or ring has I equals mr squared because all of its mass is at a distance r from the spin axis. For r equals 12 centimeters and m equals 0.26 kilograms, show that i equals 0 0.0037 kilogram meters squared. A solid disk has i equals 1 half mr squared because some of its mass is near the spin axis, but more mass is near its edge. For r equal 12 centimeters and m equals 0.26 kilograms, show that i equals 0 0.0019 kilogram meters squared. A sphere has i equals 2 fifths mr squared. For r equal 12 centimeters and m equals 0.26 kilogram, show that i equals 0 0.0015 kilogram meters squared. Compared to the disk, the sphere is missing some edge material and so has a smaller moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is greater for the object having the greatest portion of its mass farthest from the spin axis. Each of these objects have identical mass and height. When spun about the horizontal line, which object has the greatest moment of inertia? That is, which object has the greatest portion of its mass farthest from the axis? The M has the greatest portion of its mass farthest from the axis. In the check mark, most of the mass is near the axis. In the delta, more of the mass is near the axis. With the A, Q, U, and B, more of their mass is nearer the axis. The M has the greatest portion of its mass farthest from the axis, so it has the greatest moment of inertia out of these objects. When this sphere spins about its center, then its moment of inertia is I equals two-fifths mr squared. When the sphere instead spins about this axis, which is a distance h from the center of the sphere and is parallel to the central axis of the sphere, the moment of inertia is found using the parallel axis theorem. 
I equals the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus m times h squared. For a bowling ball having a mass of 7.3 kilograms and a radius of 11 centimeters, please show that the moment of inertia when spun about its center is 0 0.088 kilogram meters squared. When spun about a parallel axis that is h equal 1.7 meters from the central axis of the sphere, please show that i equals 21 kilogram meters squared. The total moment of inertia of one object that consists of n other objects is found using scalar addition. This cylinder or disk has mass m, radius r, and length l. When spun about the vertical axis, the moment of inertia of this cylinder or disk is 1 half m r squared. But when spun about the horizontal axis, the cylinder has this moment of inertia. The sphere has mass m and radius r. When spun about its center, the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is 2 fifths m r squared. Suppose that the sphere is cut in half and then the two halves are separated but still spun about their centers. The total moment of inertia of the two hemispheres is still the same as a single sphere. The mass of a sphere is capital M. Each hemisphere has mass little m equals capital M over 2 and moment of inertia 2 fifths little m r squared. If the two hemispheres are placed on the ends of the cylinder, then the total moment of inertia of the object is that of a cylinder plus a sphere when spun about the central vertical axis. We find the moment of inertia of a disk that has a disk-shaped hole by using scalar addition. We treat the non-complete disk as the combination of a complete disk and a smaller disk of negative mass. The larger disk has radius r and is spun about its center line. The smaller disk, which is the hole, has radius b and has its center a distance h away from the axis of revolution. The moment of inertia of the combination is i for the whole disk minus the moment of inertia of the little disk that has negative mass. We have the moment of inertia of the entire disk is one half capital M r squared, where capital M is the mass that the disk would have if it had no hole. The parallel axis theorem must be used to find the moment of inertia of the hole of missing mass. We have I equals ICM plus little m h squared, where little m is the mass of the material that would fill the hole. The combined total moment of inertia is then that of the solid entire disk of positive mass minus that of the little disk of negative mass given by the parallel axis theorem.